Hey girls, it's Heather. So I wanted to talk to you today about summertime and bookings and the pitfalls that can occur and how to avoid them and how to make sure that you have a rockin' bangin' summer. So first and foremost, it is really, really super important that you understand that it's business as usual. And if you stop working, your business stops as well. So I'm going to be honest and tell you that I have seen you guys um, decline your involvement on the Facebook group, your involvement with your personal teams, you're not responding to things, um, even on your personal pages, you're not as interactive. So, you know, if you're wondering why your business might be declining, it could very well be you. So re-engage and you'll be surprised at how quickly it bounces back. Now, as far as summertime goes, it really doesn't matter where you live in the country, you're going to have challenges on the weekends. It's beautiful outside, and if people work a day job, if your hostess works a day job, and she comes home every night, and you know they're kind of doing their stuff, and then they have nothing to do on the weekends, like when does that ever happen? Never. So they've got soccer tournaments, they've got weddings, they've got swim team, um, they've got all kinds of personal activities. They've got family reunions. If they live anywhere near a lake or the shore, sayonara, like they're off, right? And a lot of times that kind of stuff comes up last minute. So they might think that they're really interested in partying with you, but then they get an opportunity to go to the beach and they're gone. So you got to think about, um, you know, when you talk to them, ask them, so what does your normal weekend look like? What do you normally do on a Saturday? And they're going to give you a laundry list of things. And then you're going to say to her, so what do you do on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night or a Monday night? So let her kind of come to the conclusion herself that like there's just not as much going on on a weeknight. And that's why happy hour parties are the best. Like your girls come straight from work. They have a glass of wine. They party. You do a quick little um, demo for them. And then they go home with their stuff. And they're free for the weekend. And their partners aren't pissed because they're watching the kids on a Saturday night when they could be having fun, right? Like, it's just kind of logic. You have to logically think through what's going to be the night where nobody has anything fun to do. And they're going to be really excited about a wine night or sandals and sangria or a luau party or something fun. So that brings us to our next topic, theme parties. Theme parties are great all year long, but definitely in the summer because there's so many fun things that you can do. And um, thanks to Tiffany Brooks, we do have a great theme party booklet that you can print out and put in a little binder to have at your parties to keep them interested. Um, champagne and chocolate is a great one. Um, I have a hostess that's doing wine and cheese, no panties, please. Hmm, a little more naughty, but really fun, right? Like they're just kind of getting creative with it. So, um, and then obviously there's the standard ones. You've got Margarita Mondays, you have Toy Tuesdays, you've got a Hump Day Happy Hour. So think about what it is that you would be excited about and maybe look at your hostess's Facebook page and see what kind of things she's interested in and cater to her. The other thing you can do, um, because headcount can be challenging, you need to make sure, first of all, that your hostesses are over-inviting and that they're not limiting their guest list and they're not judging because everyone loves a pure romance party. It doesn't matter how mild or wild you are, we all have fun, so they want to invite everybody. But a lot of times, you have a lot of success if you do a nutty buddy party where you have two hostesses, two buddies that get together, and they both invite their circle of friends. So they're inviting twice as many people. They still get all the same hostess benefits. There's just more energy at their party because they have a bigger crowd. And it's not to say that you can't have a good party with five people, but it's way more fun when there's more people. It's just the way that it is. Um, that energy gets rolling. Everybody kind of feeds off each other. And when you say something funny or maybe a little naughty and, and one girl laughs, it's not four other people looking at her. It's 12 people laughing and they're not really paying attention to any individual, right? So it's just a more comfortable environment. So you want to chat with your hostess about that. Now, um, talking to your hostess is our next topic. So this is really important. And of course we have a great training video on hostess coaching. I promise you, you guys are not doing it. You are not following that system. You are picking and choosing the steps that you're doing and it's why it's not working properly because it is, it's a system. It's like taking a mathematical equation and taking the plus sign out of it. You have no idea what you're doing. So, um, stop trying to recreate the wheel and edit it and just follow the system because, man, it works like a charm. It really is very effective. But when it comes to your hostesses and they book this party, you need to tell them right on the spot that there are going to be, there's going to be a moment 
every week between when you book and when the party is that you're going to call them and you need to have a 60 second conversation with them. And that's literally what it is. Like it's fast. It does not need to be some long soliloquy. It doesn't have to be some long conference call. It's just a very quick 30 to 60 second check-in to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody is excited and we're all moving in the right direction, right? Texting, not effective. Facebook messaging, not effective. It's quick if you have a really fast question or you're trying to clarify an address or whatever, but if you're trying to talk to her about her party and get her excited and let her hear how excited you are, there has to be voice. So you really, really, really need to embrace the phone um, and let her know that it's just during the time of the party, you need to have her um, answering that phone. The other thing you can do is um, while you're standing there booking her is put each other's phone numbers in each other's phone so that when your phone number pops up, it actually says Heather Pillow and not 703-609 blah, 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 right? Like you want her to know that it's you so that she answers. And if for some reason it does go to her voicemail, that she needs to call you back that day, even if it's late. All right, so... So let's talk about getting these bookings. Like you guys are doing a lot of events. There's a lot of really, really fun, especially outdoor events right now. There's wine festivals and chili cook-offs and beer fests and bridal shows. And those are awesome resources to meet new women that you never would have done business with before. But here's what you have to remember. They don't love you yet. They thought you were cool for a minute, especially if it's an event where there's alcohol. They might have been a little tipsy. Okay. Okay. Just saying. Um, and they don't love you. So they don't feel any sense of obligation, which they need to. They need to understand that you're business partners when they book a party and that you're helping them have a really fun ladies' night out, but they're helping you make the income that you need to support your families. So when um, somebody books at those events, I'm going to be really honest with you and tell you when I book those events, I assume that they're not going to hold. I still host as coach them, and when they hold, it's like a bonus to my party schedule. But I do not rely on an entire month's worth of parties that I booked at a bridal show because the likelihood that at least 50% of those are going to cancel or reschedule is very, very high. So just kind of embrace it and um, overbook. So that's the other thing you need to deal with. Like cancellations are just a fact of life. It's just the way that it is. I don't care what time of year it is. There's going to be typically at least one in five parties is going to cancel because of family stuff or illness or work or whatever. So if you need to do one party a week, four parties a month, you need to be booking at least six to make sure there's a little bit of cushion space. Now, if all six of those hold, awesome. Like, that's phenomenal, right? And if for some reason you can't do the extra two, that's why you have a downline, and it's great party karma, and you pass that karma off to, uh, pass that party off to someone on the team, which is awesome. But don't book the absolute minimum that you need to be able to hit your sales goals and then be sad Sally when half of them cancel. It's just the way that it is. Four years ago in June, I had 11 parties um, right around like the 28th of May. And by the 3rd of June, nine of them canceled. Nine. I still had a $10,000 month because I hustled and I got on that phone and I called in some favors and I called old hostesses and um, just, you know, I, I worked my business, but it happens to everyone. I don't care how much hostess coaching you do, there's going to be cancellations. So um, being prepared for them is the way to go. Now, May and June are very tricky for those of us that have children because it is a stressful time. Like we've got a lot of birthday parties. There are a lot of children born in this time frame for some reason. So there's birthday parties, there's graduations, there's proms, um, there's recitals, there's band concerts. You got the spring band concert and the winter band concert. So all of these things all go boom, 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 back to back to back. Um, you've got all these kids that have this SOL testing. That's a whole other video. Um, but their parents are trying to make sure that they're embedded a good time. And so that makes it challenging for women that have children to do a party those nights. So this is when you want to be targeting your um, boomers, okay, ladies that maybe are closer to retirement, and your college girls, your younger professionals, your 20-somethings that don't have children yet. They love a happy hour, y'all. Like, they're going to the bar. Why would they not just bring the bar to their house, put out a couple bottles of wine, bag of chips, tray of brownies, and off you go. So, Get creative. Think about who it is that you're marketing to and is it going to be harder for them this time of year? Once you get out of school, game on. And those weeknight parties are super, super easy because nobody has anything fun to do and they're not so worried about the kids getting up at the crack of dawn because of school. Like they have a little more flexibility to get those kids out of the house. 
So um, as I was talking about on Live, Love, Win last night, one of the girls on our team shared a concept at our meeting earlier this month, Hannah Tierney, rock star, um, about doing an eight is great party. So you let your hostess choose the eight demos that you do. And it can be eight individual products or it can be like an actual demo. So like if it could be more than one product, but you demo them together, like the heart massager and the aura, right? Or the in good hands and the burning desire candle. That's one demo. So she gets to pick eight of those and at least three of them are battery operated. Okay. Um, but that way you're doing a limited demo. So it's typically going to be less than 30 minutes. You're still playing a game for fun. You're still playing a booking game. You're still playing a recruiting game, but the, the products are more limited. You're still going to have all of your product on display and they can absolutely buy anything they want, but you're only demoing a small portion of it. And that way you're in and out. If you start that party at 6 30, you're out the door by 8 30, 9 o'clock at the latest. If you have a big group. And I mean, let's be honest, like, I don't care who they are. They can keep their kids up till 830. This is not that big of a deal. Even when I had babies, it was not a big deal for them to be up until 830. So one night of fun, I think is worth it to sacrifice a little, little smidge less sleep for the baby. Um, so look at how you can get creative with those weeknights and just ask, like you're not asking. And by asking, I don't mean on Facebook. I mean, get on the phone and ask them live. Make them feel special. If somebody calls and asks me to do something, I'm going to do it if I have any possibility of fitting it into my schedule. When somebody shoots me a message, it does not mean that they value me. It means I'm just another name and number. So you can check in with people on Facebook and it's really easy. But if you're just making Facebook posts and hoping for the best, this is why you don't have parties. And this is why your clients are doing business with other people. We want them to be loyal. We want them to love you and do business with you. So make sure that you're connecting with them beyond the party where you met them. Don't be that one night stand. Make sure you're building a relationship with them so they're excited about it. Now, the other things you can be doing to make sure that you are getting some good sales and building some loyal clients is offering them specials on the products that we need all summer long. So I just did a um, video series and I posted it on this YouTube channel, so you'll see it there, of my summer survival favorites. It's seven products that I think are an absolute must have for summertime for every woman. So show them what they do, tell them why you love them, and then maybe offer them a little discount if they're interested in stocking up on those. You can also do those as um, a bundled special for your hostess gift so that they get a, you know, get a cute little, um, bucket, like a beach bucket, and put some products in there and take a picture of it and say, this is what you're going to get when you host a party. So there's lots and lots of ways to get creative. Um, the one last thing that I will tell you is if you're not following up with clients who have bought consumable products in the past, like Coochie and Body Do and Kiss and Body Boost, you are losing business and your clients are falling out of love with your product because they loved it initially, they blew through it, and they either lost your information or you're not communicating with them enough or they just got distracted and had the best of intentions of ordering something, but, you know, it's not present in their mind. It's not right in front of their face. And so they forget. So call them. Check on them. See how they like their products. If they love it, offer them a refill. The worst they're going to do is say no and you move on, but at least you've offered, you've done the right thing, and they know that you're still in business and you're still excited and that you value their business. So um, lots and lots of ways that you can kind of skin a cat. One last thing that I want to talk about is controlling your calendar. So somebody comes in, um, and let's say right now you have a Friday night party, and she's like, well, I really would like to do a Saturday, and you just don't, I don't work Saturdays in the summer, because I'm slam dunk busy with my family. That's family time, and I have to honor that. So when they come in, and they're like, well, I'd like to book a Saturday party. I'm like, okay, well, here's the deal. So I don't work Saturdays for a reason. One, it's family time. Two, I've just found that nobody comes. Like, people are just too busy. They're overscheduled on the weekends, and even if they don't have anything to do, even if they just spent the whole day at the pool with the kids, do you really think after they just spent the day in the heat, in the sun, they're tired, they're burnt, they're going to want to get in the shower, put on makeup, do their hair, put on cute clothes, and go drive somewhere? They're not. They're not going to do it. They, they might love you as a hostess, but they're not going to do it. But they will come straight from work and have a quick glass of wine, look at some fun products, giggle, laugh, get their stuff, and they're out, right? So they still get to see you, you still get to have some bonding time with your girls, and your weekends are free. So let's look at doing a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night happy hour party. Which one of those works best? 
and I just offer it. Now, once in a while, you're going to have a hostess who absolutely refuses to do anything but a Saturday. I'm going to be honest, you have to run your business. So if you are willing to sacrifice that family time, that's up to you. I typically am not, unless it is a very, very, very valid reason, like um, a bachelorette party. And even those, I typically only do once a month because I know they're going to be on Saturdays and my Saturdays, again, are family time. So typically, I'm going to tell her, listen, if you really, really want to do a Saturday, there's probably going to be a better turnout. You're going to have a more successful party if we just wait until September. So let's get the kids back in school. We'll get back on our normal schedules. I'll call you right around the 15th of August, and we'll pick a fall party date. How does that sound? And then I put them on my maybe later list, and I make sure that I call them around the 15th of August to get them on my calendar. You don't want to lose the party, and obviously you want to honor the client's wishes, but it's your business. You have to run your business, and they have to respect that as well. All right, girls, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to comment here, or you can just private message me directly. And good luck with your business. I can't wait to hear how your summer goes. But, oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. One thing. What's coming out on July 1st? Magic Mike. What? Work on this, y'all. Magic Mike is huge. They are so excited about this. Do a pre-party. I mean, that can actually go all the way. Like, those first two weeks through July, they come to your house or come to, to their house, the hostess, the hostess's house, and they do a really quick party, like 6.30 to 8, and then they go have a glass of wine, and they go to the movie at 9.30. Done. Like, that's awesome. That's so easy. That's a very quick XXL party, right? Like, have some fun with this. Women are excited about this party, or excuse me, this movie. It's going to be fun. It's going to be naughty. There's going to be way more dancing in it. And let's be honest, that's why we go watch those movies. Uh, they want to have a little chanting in their titum. Um, and it just benefits them as well so that they just have a, a good theme, something fun to do with it. So there you go. Okay, so we're done with this. I hope you found it helpful, and I can't wait to see how your summer goes. Bye, y'all.